Here you have God the Father, you have God the Son, Jesus Christ, and you have the Holy Spirit in the person, in me, by the grace of God, in you, for those of you who are loving Jesus Christ by obeying His Word, by obeying Him and living according to His Word. Guess what? You have the Godhead with you. And when you have the Godhead with you, you tell me who is the devil to harass you and I? Who is the devil or one billion demons? They can touch me. They can touch you. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. So now we just want to look uh, quickly because of time, look uh, into uh, the scriptures, the, the message that we have. We, we started something last week on the, the topic called the love for God and the love of God. The love for God and the love of God. So, and uh, I just want to, uh, this is the second part, and I want us to um, look at the scriptures uh, regarding this. Now, first of all, just as a form of introduction, um, uh, the Lord gave um, Israel as a nation uh, commandments to follow and to follow. However, the the basis on which they were to um, obey the commandments, His command was was born out of what out of their love for who for Him, for God. All right, yeah. So they were to love God. Now, if we, let's quickly look at the book of no, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. Praise God, hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. It says, um, I'll, I'll read from verse 4, pardon me. I'll read from verse 4. Deuteronomy chapter 6, reading from verse 4. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Now, another one um, in the book of uh, uh, John, uh, or Luke, pardon me, it says there, you shall also with all your mind as well. So we looked at this loving God, and we looked at what this... Uh, what 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 this what this means loving god with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind with all your strength and that's powerful so with all that you know so that love of god so god demands and god requires okay uh that uh he's that that the people who who come to him would love him now don't forget this okay that you know god brought the israelites brought them out of egypt out of bondage he brought them out of bondage. He delivered them out of bondage from the uh, from the tyranny of uh, Pharaoh and the Egyptians from 430 years of slavery. Now he brought them out because of his love for them. He brought them out, you know, so that they can become, you know, uh, because I mean they, they had they had they are already in a covenant with him. So he brought them out. So in in doing that, he says, "Listen, you are to love me because." You didn't pay me anything to do this, so but I have done this for you. So just the only way you can pay me back is to love me in return and obey my word, obey my commands. Now, in civil society, I've said it before, in civil society, we obey the command, we, pardon me, we obey the laws of civil society because of fear. Yes, it's because of fear, fear of what? Fear of penalty. We don't want to be penalized. That's the reason why we obey the laws most times in this uh, in civil society majority of the laws you obey now a lot of people don't want to pay their i mean i don't want to pay my council tax i don't want to pay my council tax yeah but i can't do that because it is a law okay yeah all right yeah so um taxes nobody likes to pay taxes but you have to it's, it's the law you know what i mean yeah so this is the, if you don't do that you get penalized so these are the things but in 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 when for in the case of you know the Christian faith, the Christian work, the work with God, it is based on loving God. It is a is based on one's love for God, and not out of fear. And I think we must have to make that distinction here because it's, it's based on what your love for God. Now, loving God, okay, is proof 
for, pardon me. Let me put that. Let me say it. Let me let me backtrack. Obeying God's word <clears throat> is proof that you love Him. A lot of people say, "Oh, I love God. I love Jesus. I love Jesus." No. They say the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Now, the way you prove that you love God is not just by saying it; it is by what is by action. Okay, action speaks louder than words. I say so. It is by what your action, your action will tell whether you love God or not. Now, Jesus said, "Let's go to the book of no, John, chapter fourteen, John fifteen, pardon me. Uh, we looked at that you know, briefly, you know, last week. Um, John chapter." Okay, let, let's look at John chapter 14, verse 15. John 14, 15. What did Jesus say? It says here, it says, If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, you will keep my what? My commandments. So, to love God is to keep his commandments. Loving God, loving Jesus, is to keep his what? His commandments. And that is plural. Commandments. Okay? So, now, that is how we prove our love for God, by keeping His commandments. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, um, so, one of the things is, is, like I said, you know, the way we, sh we you know, the way God is, God is more interested in us loving Him than trying to obey Him. Because when you love Him, it becomes easy to obey Him. All right? It becomes very, very easy to obey Him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, um, so essentially, the only way to keep God's commandments is to love Him. You have to love Him first. If you don't have the love of God in you, you're gonna fall flat in your face. You can't obey. Listen, it's it's you can't do it. It's not possible. All right, yeah, yeah, it's not possible. So so that is why you need Jesus. You know, really, you need Jesus. Now, a sinner cannot love God. A sinner cannot love Jesus. It's not possible. Why? Now, Romans chapter 8. Uh, Romans chapter 8. Praise Lord, hallelujah. Romans chapter 8 you know, says, um, I'll read from verse 6. It says, Romans chapter 8, look, look, reading verse 6 and 7 uh, and 8. It says, For to be carnally minded is death. To be carnally minded is what is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. The carnal mind is what is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. It is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God. <laughs> so you can't keep, it's not subject to the law of God. So that means you are a rebel. The person is a rebel. I was once a rebel, all right? I praise God, you know, uh, you know, Jesus, you know, turned me around and I'm not a saint of his. Amen. Um, so, it says, For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. Now, verse 8 says, So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Those who are in the flesh cannot what please God. So, you want to obey God's word? Living in the flesh means, you know, you are still in, living in your sins. You cannot please God. You cannot obey God's word, sadly. But um, it is only by one repenting of their sins. It is only by you know, the conviction of the Holy Spirit coming upon a person and the person repents of his or her sins. Um, knows that he or she has obviously, you know, broken God's laws and disobeyed you know, God's word and uh, and is remorseful about it. Okay, it's remorseful about it. So, and the person then you know, decides to make a U turn, repents, turns away from it, and he he accepts God's forgiveness because God loves people. He loves you, and, and he is willing to forgive you. Only if you want to repent. Only if you're willing to repent. God's forgiveness is available to all. No matter who you are, it's available to all. You just have to, you know, um, make that decision to say, no, I don't want to live a life of sin anymore. But I want God's love. And God wants to pour out his love on you, upon you. And um, that you, for, you have to accept his forgiveness, first of all. And then you then receive his son, Jesus Christ, as Savior and Lord. By that way, he then comes in, he then comes to live in you. 
and what happens next is that you know, the Holy Spirit then comes and lives and makes his dwelling in you. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. He lives in you. And you, the, the love of God is then poured out in your heart, according to Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Praise God, hallelujah. Romans chapter 5, verse 5 says, Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God it has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. You see, so it is with that, it is with the Holy Spirit in you that you are able to now love God. You are able to now obey God's word. You are able to um, submit to his word, the authority of his word, to obey him, to love God, to love others as well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, just this, you know, Saturday I was uh, out on evangelism and uh, met with somebody. This is somewhere I was somewhere else completely. And uh, just reached out to this uh, fellow and, you know, we began to talk. Um, you know, and, and cut a long story short, don't want to go into details, cut a long story short, uh, he, he received you know, God's forgiveness and uh, he accepted Christ as his Savior and Lord. He repented of his sins. Uh, you know, he's, a lot of things he's been into. That's, that's, you see, that's the thing. He, God is so loving. <laughs> and then prayed for him. Um, uh, and, and, you know, something new, you know, happened in his life. Something new happened in his life. Um, you know, he, he just, you know, felt, he says, wow, he was, um, he, he was, he was sound like he was shaking now. And I prayed for him. And he said, having some, he uh, says, wow, I've never felt like this before. And then I asked him, I said, I always ask you know, people who uh, I, Pray the prayer, the sinner's prayer with, and uh, so I said, Jesus Christ, I say, my Lord. I said, how do you feel inside of him? He said, he feels relieved. He says he feels light. Praise God. Why? Because of that weight of sin is gone away, has been taken away from him. Because of who? Because he received God's forgiveness. He accepted God's forgiveness. He repented of his sins. He was washed clean with the blood of Jesus Christ. And now... Uh, he's in Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. So there is such a that is such a wonderful miracle. The miracle of what of what of salvation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, so this is what the love of God is about. Now, when you then when such a when, when that fellow, for instance, now who made that decision, who received Christ as Savior Lord consciously, it then enables him to love God by to love Jesus by obeying His word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah by obeying his word now jesus said in the book of john chapter 14 verse 21 now it, it, you know it, it's, it's it might be a, it might be a struggle but uh, once you remain steadfast in that when you remain you know committed to uh, to christ to him to him to his word uh, he, he gives you the victory praise god hallelujah now let's look at john chapter 14 verse 21 it says um, he who has my commandment and keeps them, it is he who loves me. Um, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Okay? He says that he who has my commandment and keeps them, it is he who does what who loves me. So again, Jesus is emphasizing here. It is not about somebody who says, Jesus, I love you, I love you, Jesus, I love you, Jesus. No, it is those who keep his commandments. It is those who have it and then they keep, they know it and then they keep his commandments. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, keeping that is a show, okay, is proof that you love Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And like I said, and it takes that grace of God. It takes, you know, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit in you when the person receives Christ as Savior Lord, becomes, repents and becomes born again. That is, you know, it's, it's a new thing. I mean, it's something so powerful, so significant that happens that takes place in the life of a person. When a person is born again, is reborn, because that spirit that is so used to sin, all right, that, that it's now, it, it, it has a new nature. You didn't have a new nature. And that nature now is, it, it gravitates more towards obeying God, 
the things of God, wanting the things of God much more than um, the, uh, what the person has been delivered from or has been saved from, the sinful lifestyle the person has been saved from. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. So, so these are the things. So when you, that person then receives to know that, he is able to keep what he says, he will keep my word, and my father will do it. My father will do it for the Lord. And what they say there, and um, my father will love, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Now, manifesting myself to him means you know, God will re- Jesus will reveal himself to a person, to you and I. Essentially, essentially through his word. Through his word, as you as you focus and daily you you study the word, you make it, God is revealing, He's just opening up, you know, your understanding and my understanding to to him, praise the Lord, hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of you know, John chapter 5, verse 39, John 5, 39, you know, Jesus was speaking to the, to the Jews there, John chapter 5, verse 39, it says, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. <laughs> they were rejecting him, you know, looking for the eternal life in the scriptures, not knowing that eternal life was standing right in front of them there and yet they rejected him they were rejecting him so the the scriptures testify of who of who of jesus christ the bible talks about who is about who one person is about jesus christ praise about hallelujah it's about god because the word is who is jesus jesus is the word the word is jesus christ so when we look at that so the scripture is all about jesus christ it, it testifies. It testifies about who about him. So God is. So Jesus is able to reveal Himself to us through His Word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He reveals Himself to us through His Word. That is the key thing. And I want to say that um, as the mom, we 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 take the time to study the Word. Praise God. So so important. The more we take the time to study the Word. Jesus is revealing himself to us by his Holy Spirit through his word. Praise God. Hallelujah. And he will reveal why. Because we love him. We want to know more about him. Amen. Praise God. So, so very, very important. So we're looking at the topic here. The love for God and the love of God. The love for God and the love of God. So, um, so like I said, Jesus revealed himself to, uh, to us. Why? Because we love him. Because we love him, we are keeping his commandments, we are we are doing the things that pleases him, then God the Father would also love us as well. He will love us. And you know, uh, Jesus said he will reveal himself to us. So I mean one of the one of the examples of you know of, of God the Father loving us is that he would defend us. You see, when you are in love with somebody, um, you defend the person. You you fight for the person. Amen. Praise God. And that's the thing. So, uh, so when you have that love for Jesus, um, God the Father defends you. You see, um, he, he defends your hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. He defends us. Hallelujah. So, these are the things that we must understand. That God is interested in those who love his son jesus christ and, and, and i'm it, it's, it's very sad that there are certain people who uh, will talk about god but they don't talk about jesus christ they don't talk about him they don't talk about jesus christ they don't love jesus christ but you see these are the things that are very very it's it's a very uh it's very that's a very very dangerous place to be you, you know jesus says you know i am my father and i want you know certain uh, religions or denominations of uh, Christian Christianity, they would say, "Oh, they talk is God about God about God," and they downplay Jesus. Yes, we're not saying that. But you see, God, Jesus says, "I am my Father. I want where well, I want." So when we put that understanding and we love Christ, when you're talking about Jesus Christ, we're talking about God the Father. We're talking about God. Amen. Praise God. So that is what you know. We need to understand that love for God. And the love of God is what we're looking at. The love for God and the love, uh, the love for God and the love of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, there's a very powerful you know, scripture there in that same, you know, John chapter 14. And I'm so quick 
uh, I want to quickly get there. John chapter 14, verse 23. It says, <laughs> this is a scripture that, um, uh, you know, has been such a blessing to me for since I've known this scripture. It said, Jesus, uh, well, this is our read from verse 22. Judas, you know, said, Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Now, pay attention now. Jesus is manifesting himself to his own, not to the world. All right, yeah? He said, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him. Hmm. And we will come to him and make our home with him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We will make what our abode, the King James Version said, we will come and we will make our abode with all, with who? With him. Praise the Lord. Verse 24 says, He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. So, looking at that verse 23, that if you obey, he said, Jesus said that, he says, uh, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will do what will love him. And we will come and make our home with him. So, here you have God the Father, you have God the Son, Jesus Christ, and you have the Holy Spirit in the person, in me, by the grace of God, in you, for those of you who are loving Jesus Christ by obeying his word, by obeying him and living according to his word, guess what? You have the Godhead with you. And when you have the Godhead with you, you tell me who is the devil to harass you and I. Who is the devil or one billion demons? They can touch me. They can touch you. Why? Because you have God the Father. You have Jesus God the Son. You have the Holy Spirit dwelling, making their abode with us. In me. With me. Hallelujah. That's exciting. Honestly. So, no matter what it is that the evil one, the adversaries you know will throw at you and i but because we are loving jesus because we love him no such weapon formed against us shall ever prosper in the mighty name of jesus christ so you must understand this just picture it in your mind that he god the father the almighty god himself and jesus christ the son and the whole they make their what they will make their abode with you simply because you love jesus simply because you are keeping his commandments Praise God, hallelujah. Simply because you're what you are keeping and you are adhering to his commandments. So you have the Father, you have the Son, you have the Holy Spirit now making their home with you and I. My, 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 man, you are a walking you you I mean you you there's power in you. Praise God, hallelujah. So and that is the beauty of this sense. Okay, yeah. In loving God. God makes his staff and he makes his, his abode with you. Praise God. He doesn't move anywhere else. He stays with you. He moves everywhere. You're sleeping, you're eating, you're, he's there with you and I. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So we must understand this. So there is that, you know, advantage that we have. That because, why? Because we simply obey God's word. We simply obey Jesus' commandment, proving that we love him. Again, I just reiterate that you know, we prove our love for God by a simple act of obedience to His Word, by obeying Jesus, obeying His commandments. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, I want us to understand that and that is exciting. That you know, no devil, nothing can, you know, um, you, are, you become what untouchable. It doesn't mean that you not get challenged. Yeah, you can be challenged. Yeah. But guess what? You always know come out victorious in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And that is one of the key things. In the book of John chapter 6, verse 33, Jesus says, you know, that um, um, John 16, 33, uh, it says, you know, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Then be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have uh, So the one who has overcome the world now lives in you. If you have repented of your sin. Sin kills. Sin destroys. You know, um, but the the love of God demonstrated through His Son Jesus Christ coming to die on an old rugged cross 
for the whole of humanity, for you and I, so that we can have a relationship with God, so that we can become God's children. That is love that was demonstrated for to, to us, to the whole of humanity. And then when you receive that, you believe it and you receive Jesus Christ as that love of God that was demonstrated, that God demonstrated to us, to all of humanity. Why? Because humanity is lost in sin. And humanity is under the bondage of sin and a prey to the wicked one, to the devil and his, and his forces. But when you choose to repent of your sins and you choose to, act, to turn away from your sinful ways, and receive God's forgiveness, accept God's forgiveness because He wants to forgive you. He's so merciful. He wants to, he, he loves you. He created you, you know, to have an eternal relationship with you and I. And then you then receive Jesus Christ as Son and Savior and Lord, as a Savior of your soul from where? From eternal damnation in that place called hellfire. And Jesus then becomes your Lord. Lord means, you know, the person you submit to. That means, you know, he now is the person who directs your life. Your life is patterned and you align yourself with what? With God's word, which is, you know, Jesus himself. Because Jesus is the word. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 1, it says, you know, that, you know, the, um, and the, the word became flesh and dwell among us. Okay, so Jesus is the word. So you then pattern your life. You, are, you pattern your life according to God's word. Praise God. Hallelujah. Then... What happens next is that you, you start to experience you know, the, the peace and the joy of God. That you are now a lover of Christ. You are a, God then loves you. And because God loves you, um, whatever situation that comes your way, He will defend you. Yes, He will fight for you. Yes, He fights for His lovers. He fights for those who love His Son, Jesus Christ. He fights for us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, believe it or not, he fights for us. The same way God did uh, in the days of old, in, uh, in, in, in the Old Testament, how he um, protected or fought for, his, uh, for Israel uh, as, a, as a nation. The same way God fights for you and I. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, please understand this, that God's interest is for you and I to love him. And by loving Jesus, his son, he comes and makes his abode with us. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit make their abode with you and I. Make their home. They move in <laughs> into your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Man, my, my, my. You are a mobile powerhouse. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I want you to remember this, that you are a mobile powerhouse because God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit now dwell in you. They make their abode with you, in you. They make their home. It says here, they come, it says, uh, um, verse 23, it says, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home. Make our home what with him. So God wants to make his home with you. And I. God wants to make his home with you. Yes. He wants to make his home with you. He wants to just come and move in. Yes, that's it. He wants to move into your house, into your life. Would you accept him? Would you, be, would you receive him? Would you allow him? God, this is the creator. Of, can you imagine that? The creator of the universe, the maker of heaven and earth, wants to move into your life, wants to come and live in you. Not just him, with, the, with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, the, the Godhead, coming to live in you. So what do you what what do you, you have nothing to do or to fear? Praise God, Hallelujah! Now, so we're talking about the love for God and the love of God. Praise God, Hallelujah! So these are the things that you benefit when you love God. Okay, when you love God, um, uh, God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they make their abode, they make their home um, with you. Okay, praise the Lord. They make their board words with you. Praise God. Amen. So, um, and Jesus would manifest himself to us. Okay, all right. That's another thing again. He manifests himself. He reveals himself to us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Like I said, principally through his word. Principally through his word. So, the revelation of Christ, you know, from, his, from the Bible, 
He gives us the understanding and we put faith in Him. As we put faith in His Word, then that is through the revelation that we get from the Word. Praise God, hallelujah. Then we'll see the beauty, we'll see the joy, we'll see the blessings as well of loving God, loving Jesus Christ, and loving God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, I'll quickly just you know, touch on something that you know, we'll be talking about you know, um, uh, next week, and that is going to be from the book of you know, 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4, I'll quickly just read because of time right now. Uh, I'm just conscious of time. 1 John chapter 4. Um, uh, it says, Beloved, I'll read from verse 7. It says, Beloved, uh, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Praise God. In this, in this is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation of for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. So, I mean, this sums up you know, the love of God. Like I said, we'll look into that you know, much more. But one of the things I just want to say here is this. In that verse um, 9, it says, in this, the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent His Son, His only begotten Son, into the world, and that we might live for through Him. So, Jesus is the um, Jesus coming, is the um, uh, is God demonstrating His love for humanity. John 3.16 says that for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whoever believes in Him, whoever you are, whoever believes in Him shall not perish, shall not end up in the lake of fire, in hellfire, uh, because of what? Because of sin. But how the person will spend eternity, will spend eternity, have eternal life uh, with Jesus Christ. In heaven, in glory. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, this is a choice, my friend, that you have. You can make that choice today. Uh, God demonstrated His love on the cross. was where Jesus, the best, the dearest and best of God, was slain. So, that's true that. And that you receive His um, God's love, God's grace, God's love for humanity, for you and I. And that you receive Him. You receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. You repent of your sins. You turn away from your sins. Luke chapter 24, verse 46 to 28. Luke 24, it says that for thus it was necessary. Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ. I uh, said, then he said to them, Thought it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. To all nations begin at Jerusalem. So Jesus you not know, died. It was his death, his crucifixion, everything was born out of God's love for humanity. And so that you no know, repentance. God, what, what is repentance? Means you are willing to turn away from your sinful ways. You're willing to turn away from every act of sin that you know. Um, uh, you, that you know you're doing, or you keep doing, or you've been doing, because you you know it's it's it is it, alienating you from God. Yes, that's why it is. So you want to repent so that you can have this relationship. Why? Because God cannot have anything to do with sin in any shape or form at all. So, but it is true. This through His Son Jesus Christ. There's no other way. There's no other no religion. Nothing. There's not how we. Of having access to God, to the creator of the universe, the maker of the heaven and, and the almighty God, no other but through who? Through Jesus Christ, his son, his only begotten son. And so you just as you know, God said to in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5 to the to Israel, you no, know, he said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. 
don't expect. Why? Because you brought it out of your out of Now, when you understand that God has delivered you from sin, from the life of sin, when you understand that you no know, God, by being saved, that you have been saved from what? From eternal damnation, potentially eternal damnation, yes, in a place called hellfire. Man, listen. There's nothing greater than that. You then, you know, decide to love God and decide to, uh, to live for Him. Then that is when you have rem remission of your sins. That is forgiveness of your sins. No matter what you've done, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, God is willing to forgive you if you're willing to repent and turn away and experience the love of God like never. Like never. You can never, there's no other way you can experience God's love except by repenting of your sins, accepting you know, God's forgiveness and then receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord. I want you to know that the God cares about you, my friend. I want to pray for you there out there. God wants to help you. He wants to show his love to you. But the only way he can help you is, is through his son, Jesus Christ, that you have to repent because he can't have anything to do with sin. Sin is what, you know, um, um, stops God's hand from walking in your life or in my life. Praise the Lord. But when you accept God's forgiveness, when you repent of your sins, uh, he will receive you. Uh, Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear, but your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have, have hidden his face from you, so that he will not what he will not hear you. God wants to speak to you. God wants to help you, my friend. But if you're willing to do things, if you're going to turn away from your sins, then you have to make God's help. I want to pray for you right now. No matter what you have done, no matter who you are, no matter your sins, you may be uh, the worst of sinners. So Jesus, um, His blood is available to, uh, to cleanse you of that sin, of any sin, of every sin, and that you stop that sinful act or those sinful acts and in turn to start to follow Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. And you, you find the love of God poured out in your heart and you start to obey God. It starts, you start to obey Him. Praise God. Honey. I just want to pray for you right now. If you want to um, receive God's love and uh, again, like I said, you know, the the benefits of this is that God starts to help you. Jesus overcame the world, according to John chapter 16, verse 33. He overcame the world. So that means, yes, as a human being, you always face problems and challenges, but He will overcome. He will see you and I through. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray for you right now. Let's pray. Just if you want Jesus to come into your heart to be your Savior and Lord. Or you have been a Christian, and but if you were to die today, you're not sure, you're not 100% sure that you're going to be in the presence of Jesus Christ. Then listen, um, I want to just pray for you right now. Just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear God, I come to you today. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I have sinned against you. I have broken your laws. Now I know that I have done them all in ignorance. Ignorant of your ways and ignorant of your word. And I, and I repent of all my sins and of all my wrongdoings. And I ask you to please forgive me. Wash me clean of all my sins. With the precious blood of your son, Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus Christ, your only begotten son, came into this world about 2,000 years ago died on the cross for me, to save me from my sinful nature and from sin. And on the third day you raised him from the dead, that I may be justified as though I never committed any sin. Therefore, I willingly receive you, Jesus Christ, into my heart, to be my Savior from my sinful nature and from sin, and to be the Lord of my life, to be the master of my life, to be the one whom I now live for, to be the one whom I now follow. 
fill me with your Holy Spirit. I receive your Holy Spirit to live a victorious and a successful Christian life. Loving you, Jesus Christ. Living for you, Jesus Christ. Serving you, Jesus Christ. All the days of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for accepting me as a child. In Jesus Christ, for living my heart for you. Amen and amen. Amen. All right? I'm just going to pray for you right now. Father, I want to thank you for this one who has prayed this for you. The Bible says that with the heart one to give unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is the of salvation. I want to thank you for this one who has prayed this prayer. Your grace has found them. Hallelujah. The grace that brings salvation, O Lord, has appeared to these ones. And I want to thank you for them. I pray, Heavenly Father, that from tonight, O Lord, Lord, even now, Father, that a um, a new life in Christ begins in, in them in the name of Jesus Christ. A life, O Lord, of loving you, Jesus, of keeping your commandments, of obeying you, O Lord, to the letter. Start to operate in their lives, start to manifest in their lives, they start to live life and to live their life to you, Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, right now, baptize them with your Holy Spirit and with your power. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray the baptism of the Holy Spirit and of power come upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ. With the evidence of speaking in tongues, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now, Father, baptize them with your Holy Spirit and with your fire in the name of Jesus Christ. The fire of your love, the burning fire of your love in the name of Jesus Christ. Baptize them right now. Oh, yes, Lord, that they will be unstoppable in Jesus' mighty name. Father, thank you. Lord, your love is by is, is keeping your command. And Father, we thank you for this one, Lord. As you baptize them with your Holy Spirit and with your fire, Lord, they will keep your word. And Lord, that they will be on fire for you, serving you in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, for their families. Because of them, all the members of their families are saved in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, that you will use them, Father, to be a blessing even to multitudes Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and even millions in Jesus' mighty name. We give you thanks and we give you praise. Blessed be your holy name, O Lord. Cover their spirits and bodies with the God of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Amen. Uh, we've got just very little time right now. We're just going to pray right now. Uh, we're going to come in agreement. Whatever um, you are believing God for right now for a miracle, come on, let's join faith together. Let's join you together and let us talk to our Heavenly Father. Let's call upon our Heavenly Father right now. He is a miracle. And let us ask for a miracle from Him. Not just a miracle, but a miracle right now. Father, we come before you tonight. Lord, you know each one. Each one. You know each one, O oh Lord, who is present before you right now. And Father, you know that thing, that innermost desires of, of, of each one's heart right now. My certain inclusive. And so, Father, I pray right now, Father, for your for that miracle, that miracle, O oh Lord, that each one is asking you for. Lord, let it be released unto them right now, according to your will, to the glory of your holy name, in the name of Jesus Christ. That miracle, whatever it is, O oh Lord, Father, I declare it, O oh Lord, Father, released unto this one, unto each one right now, under the sound of my voice, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you are the miracle worker. And therefore, O oh Lord, we declare, O oh Lord, because we have, because we are your lovers, hallelujah. Therefore, thank you, Father, for the miracles, O oh Lord, that we desire, that we need, O oh Lord. Our innermost desires, O oh Lord. Father, we receive those miracles right now to the glory of your holy name in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, according to your will for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you right now. Whatever, O oh Lord, the, uh, the devil has brought, O oh Lord, in the life of anyone. All that is on my voice. I decree those demonic activities now come to an end. And I bind whatever spirit is causing any issues in the life of anyone. All that is on my voice. And I decree you set free right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive your miracles now in Jesus' mighty name. Receive your miracles right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Receive your miracles right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever it is, by faith, receive it. Receive it now in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. 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 Oh, wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Okay. 
All right, I hope you received that. Um, you know, God is interested in uh, blessing his lovers. Okay, all right. So once you're a lover of Jesus, a lover of God, listen, God will bless you. And those miracles are is the supernatural manifestation of God's power. Okay, in whatever it is that you and I are believing in for, we have received it. And we thank you for it in the name of Jesus Christ. So please share, do share your testimonies with us uh, of what the Lord has done for you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Very quickly, I also want to um, thank those of you who received Christ as Savior and Lord uh, in the course of this um, prayer. I want you to know that you know, that's the greatest decision you could ever make. And I want to encourage you as a ministry. There are four things that you begin to do. You start to do number one. Start to attend the Bible believing teaching and preaching church. It must be a church that honors God the Father, uh, glorifies Jesus Christ in their sermons and in their doctrines and their teachings. They don't debate the Bible, okay? Um, they don't debate the Word of God. Uh, they honor and they reverence the Holy Spirit, not as a force, not as an it, but as a person, as the third person of the Godhead. So, and they reference the Holy Spirit in that place as well. And they also emphasize that they also uh, emphasize on the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Okay, all right. And that is the hell of the, you know, living church. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because the Spirit without the body is dead. So if the Holy Spirit is not in the church, the place church is, the church is dead. So go somewhere where there is where there is life, where the Spirit of God is there. All right. Praise God. Hallelujah. Two, make sure, please, you start to read the Bible. The word of God is um, how we know God. Jesus said how he will reveal himself to us. He will manifest himself to us through his word. So get to start reading the Bible daily. Make it, make it, you know, uh, a duty to read the Bible every day. Sit with the word, sit with the word of God. Study it and read it every day. You'll be surprised what the Lord will be saying to you in Jesus' mighty name. Okay, all right? Get to know Jesus more through that. Number three. You need to have an active prayer life. Take time, spend time in prayer. So, so important. Do please spend time in prayer. Prayer strengthens our love, strengthens our relationship with God. Amen. Praise God. Okay. And the number four, start to tell people about Jesus Christ. Tell people about Jesus. Uh, don't keep it to yourself. Jesus has done something. Tell people. Okay. All right. That way, uh, you continue to build up you, strengthen your faith even the more. And your relationship with the one the mighty of Jesus Christ. Okay, praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Listen, I want to thank you for um, uh, your time and thank you for being a part of this service tonight. Um, again, please remember that you know, God's love for you and I is beyond what we can ever imagine. First, first Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 says, you No, know, for eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has the effect in the heart of man. The things, God, it, that, the things that God has for those who love Him. Hallelujah. So there are so many things God has for you and uh, those of us who love that he has revealed them, he keeps revealing them to us by what? By his Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. So that is why it's so important that you have and maintain this close fellowship with the person of the Holy Spirit. Because he is the one that will reveal to you through the scriptures, okay, first and foremost, the things that God has in store for you and I. Praise God. Hallelujah. So please get into the word. Okay? Get into the word. And before you read the Bible, always pray, say, Holy Spirit, open my eyes and teach me. Okay, all right? Very important. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let, listen, we meet again uh, on Friday, uh, same time, 7 p.m. GMT. So please do not forget to log in and let us study the Word of God together. And uh, it's going to be a wonderful time in God's presence. Praise God. Hallelujah. So um, as we have entered into the month of March, I decree that it shall be a month of uh, of progress, a month of special app divine appointments in the name of Jesus Christ. It shall be a month of a, with a, a month with a difference, with a difference indeed. That you know, there will be testimonies. You will have testimonies of God's mighty works of His presence in your life this month in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord cause His grace to shine upon you, the Lord be gracious to you, lift His kindness upon you, and give you peace and peace and peace in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Enjoy the rest of your week. And uh, we'll meet again on Friday.
God willing, and uh, let's watch it all together on Friday. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Bye. Join Lighthouse Gospel Ministries every Wednesdays for Bible study and Fridays for revival service on Facebook, Instagram or YouTube via the links showing on the screen. Follow us on all our social media pages for daily inspiration from the Word of God.